Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. So I think we should just, um, I think we should just jump into this, guys. I will uh, put up the uh, article. There's tons of articles going out there. This news has been kind of breaking in the last, like, two, three hours or so. So let's put this one, let's put, let's see if we can get this up here. Okay, this is from the BBC News. It says, Trudeau announces ban on 1,500 kinds of assault weapons. Um, new rules would make it illegal to sell, transport, import, or use 1,500 varieties of assault weapons. The ban is effective immediately, but there will be a two-year amnesty period for law-abiding gun owners to comply. You, you, you notice how they put law abiding? Cause, I, yeah, go ahead, Walt. I, I don't under, I don't know how a whole thing in Canada works, but I guess true, this is just something that's an edict on his part. He just says, okay, no guns for you. And that's I guess, it. yeah, I'm guessing Canada could do um, like executive orders or something, right? I don't know. Maybe this is an executive order. Uh, right, let's not use that. Let's not use that terminology. Uh, what? I don't, think, I don't think it's an executive order. I think it's just a... He's just a dictator. That's all he is. I mean, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So, so yeah. apparently, so this article goes on to say Trudeau also said he would introduce legislation, which has yet to pass, to offer a buyback program. Um, unlike the U.S., gun ownership is not enshrined in Canada's constitution. What? Canada has no Second Amendment. Oh, you well, guys. They, no, I want to do something about that. Go ahead, Walt. They run just like the Brits and the and the, and the Australians. That's that same, yeah, Parliament and and you know Prime Minister and all that bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and basically, they're subject to the Queen ultimately. They're subject to the, to <laughs> the British Prime Minister and the Queen um, ultimately in Canada. Um, and uh, I've told you guys before, we might you know maybe we should just roll up on Canada and take over. Especially, I know. In, you know, it looks like in the next two years they'll be wide open. Uh, yep. Let's let me let me go on here with this article before everyone gives their opinion. Let's get some uh, some of this info out here. Um, unlike where where I left off, unlike the U.S., gun ownership is not enshrined in Canada's constitution. Okay. Um, but gun ownership is still popular, especially in rural parts of the country. Mr. Trudeau made a point of saying that most gun owners are law-abiding citizens but argued that assault weapons serve no beneficial purpose. This is a quote from him. These weapons were designed for one purpose and one purpose only, only to kill the largest amount of people in the shortest amount of time, he said in a press conference Friday. He says, uh, you don't need an AR-15 to bring I'm down good. a deer. Okay, so that's the first, that's the first part of uh, nonsense and lies right there. These guns were not designed for that. They were not designed to kill mass amounts of people. Nope. So uh, even yeah, he even put on there that anything that's capable of firing semi-automatic with high cap mag. So like a ten twenty two would be in that category. So is he going to ban that also? So uh, if you read it, it sounds like anything that can hold a, um, a magazine with high caps. Yeah. So there's a lot of things out there. I'm sure you guys. I'm sure the folks who are watching this have your opinion. We're going to take some time here and really get into this. Um, yeah. So, the, do you want to do you want to start with Let's start with what happened in Canada, right? In Nova Scotia. First of all, I'm going to say obviously there was a there was a um, there was an event that happened in Nova Scotia about what was that like a week ago? Was that yeah, it's been, yeah. It's been a couple at least. Yeah, a couple it, weeks. Yeah, yeah, like 2 weeks ago. All right, let's say in that time frame, this guy, basically we don't even know fully what happened, but we know a guy killed a lot of people. Um and he disguised himself as a police officer. This actually went on for like days. They were trying to find this guy. I think this was more than 24 hours or around that time that they were trying to lock this guy down, right? Um, I guess, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He obviously used firearms. We don't know what firearms he used, how he got his hands on them. But he also burned. Uh, there was an article. I'm trying to find that article. I thought I sent it to you guys as well. But he also... Uh, it, it, he burned down houses, and that's how he killed nine people. Well, maybe they should ban firing. 
Canada. Yeah, f- you know, definitely fire should be illegal or burning down people's house. Oh, wait a second. Already. Yep. Mur- Murder is already illegal over there. Um, oh, here we go. I found the article. Let me let me put this up on the screen here so everyone can see this. Nova Scotia gunman killed nine of his 22 victims by setting fire to their houses, police say. Okay. Uh, nine of the 22 victims in Canada's Nova Scotia province earlier this month in a weekend shooting rampage died in house fires set by a gunman. Uh, the shooter, 51-year-old, we don't care what his name is, also killed pets. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police, RCMP, said in an update to their inv- investigation to the killings. So there's no, there's no final uh, report on this, but they're making laws that everyone in Canada has to live by. The shoot, okay, here it goes. Shooting took place over 13 hours on April 18th and 19th in the Atlantic province of Nova Scotia. Um, over 400 witnesses have been identified and more than half interviewed. So there was a whole bunch of people that saw this thing. Mostly people couldn't do anything about it. Canada already has laws. Um, He's just talking. Yeah, go ahead, Walter. If you want to say something, jump in. Yeah, but they still have guns. Yeah. <laughs> they have laws, but they still have guns. They have gu- they have guns that we don't have here. So um, I don't know if that's necessarily. They may not be able to carry, but mm-hmm. I don't know. You yeah, know it's I mean? a it's a weird kind of situation in Canada that uh, you can definitely have suppressors. You can get your yeah, hands one on of suppressors the, easier. Go ahead. One go of ahead, his Jay. um one of his campaign promises was to get rid of all um assault weapon a uh, type uh, assault weapon um rifles and. Mm-hmm. Uh, and possibly you know, all of this, but that was, he, he said what he wanted to do when he got voted in. So unfortunately, mm-hmm. Canada's um, there's big cities, and then there's thousands of miles of nothing, mm-hmm. and the people that live in the thousands of miles of nothing don't have any voice. Mm-hmm. So um, that's that's why the leftists here want to take away the electoral college, so mm-hmm. so the so they can uh, they can they can seed their uh, we can have that their, same issue here. Uh, right, so like, exactly. In the middle, mm-hmm. the people out, the people in the middle of the country will have no voice. So, you see, um, uh, upstate New York, they have no voice. The majority yeah, well, of people with the laws are, are the city folks, and you have most of New York's just farmland and country, and you have certain people in the city just voting for everybody in New York. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's. So I want to. I want to try to deal with this in a couple of different ways here, just to respond to what's coming out of Canada. Now, obviously, that's Canada, and we're in America. So I'm going to start there for anyone, people from Canada or whatever, who say, hey, this got nothing to do with you guys. Hey, we can talk about whatever we want to. We don't care. And you're not free anyway if you're in Canada. So we are free to say whatever we want and talk about you. Uh, And we also don't want to be infected by your nonsense in America further than we've already been, (laughs) you know, uh, affected here by uh, gun control. In this situation... This guy did this, they said, for 13 hours. A whole bunch of people saw this. Walter, I know I know that you're saying people do have guns over there. No one was able well, to respond to this guy, including it, the cops. And why is that? That's a good where question. Were the, where, where were the popo? Where, where didn't they come riding? 13 right, hours? Right then, where did the mounted police come riding in on their, on their, on their horses and come save the day? I yeah. don't know. Where, you can, just like here I, in America. Nova Scotia is not densely populated. Right. Even their cities aren't densely populated. So if somebody starts shooting, don't they have cell phones in there? Don't they have telephones? I, have... I think he did his first thing, hit out, and then um, he hit out somewhere, and then he started doing this. But he he was dis- he was disguised as a police officer, right? Even had like a vehicle or got a, poli- a vehicle uh, that belonged to yeah, a police yeah, officer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can see him starting his fires first because then they're, the people respond to random fires, so you don't know it's going to be a mass casualty thing because yeah. it's mm-hmm. just random fires. And then mm-hmm. when the shooting comes in, maybe stretch them thin. I don't know how many cops mm-hmm. are up in Nova Scotia in that area. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that'd be smart, you know, set the fires first, draw the attention to that. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. when all the resources go there, you go and take care of your, uh, what you, who you're trying to get. Yeah. Ultimately, yeah. just like all of us here in America, and, and JP, if anyone doesn't know, he's a police officer. He's in law enforcement here in America. And we'll probably talk about that. I'm sure as we go forward here, but you know everyone knows this. Uh, you, you're your own first responder. Yes, right? sir. You know why? Why do we have 
countries like this and even states and people here in America who believe the same thing that when these bad things happen when some guy does something horrible like this and and destroys people their pets and all that kind of stuff in their own homes why do they think the solution is the exact opposite of what it should be why do they think the solution is to take guns away from people because I know people feel like hey I, I need more guns in my house in case something like this happens I don't need you to take guns away from everyone, and then when some person goes crazy and gets their hands on this stuff anyway, then everyone's left defenseless. Well, you had the left wanting to take guns away for how long? So they use any excuse to take guns away. Well, mm -hmm. COVID-19 is a good example. The gun stores were packed, packed, so it's like the opposite. It's weird. Like mass shootings, they want to take guns away. Mm -hmm. A virus that can kill people in food shortages, possibly hyped up by the media, I think. Then everybody goes out and buys guns. They sold like two million guns in like like a week or less than a week or something crazy like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So obviously, people know if there's gonna be a societal breakdown, you know, the law enforcement is gonna try to be there, but it's probably not gonna be there. You know, the, uh, a... let me let me give you a little example of, of what happens is um, like in New Orleans, the law enforcement, some of them, a lot of them, hopped in their cars and drove to Houston and abandoned the cars. Now, I'm not going to say that's happened everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or they go home and they take care of their own. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and, and I understand that because, you know, if my wife's sitting at home with the kids and, and all hell's breaking loose, I think I'm going to go home and take care of my kids first. Yeah. Uh, right. gonna... uh, I mean, if you're a police officer, you kind of, you, 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 I, I know, I know you swore saying. a duty. <laughs> yeah. So well, I, I don't know, you know, you made this decision. When but you human nature officer. dictates your... Their yeah. priorities. Yeah, so. I mean, every night you're leaving, and 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 you know, I understand exactly what you're saying, Walt, because that's the re. You're talking about the reality of what reality happened. of life. Yeah, yeah. Not, versus not we're, the, yeah, the we're, paper. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about the honor and the beauty that we see in our own minds. JP, you're a police officer. Yeah. You want to speak to this here before? Oh yeah, I have a brother. It's a police officer in Phoenix. I have a brother in NYPD, and mm -hmm. that I don't know if the Northeast is immune to that. Uh, we get paid more and more educated. I don't know. I don't. I'm not making fun. No. You know, I'm not saying yeah. either way. But mm -hmm. it, like, we didn't have any of that. Not one of our officers went out being sick. Not one like milked it. We all went to work. Uh, NYPD was hit a little harder, but it's mm -hmm. also a 38,000 uh, person department. So, yeah, yeah. you know, you're going to have your slugs that might, or, or they're possibly really got sick. People got sick, you know, for sure. they're, they're closer, but mm -hmm. yeah, um, I, we don't, I never, up here, no one abandoned their posts. I, I, mm -hmm. It's just a different place to live, I guess. I think it's a different kind of situation, though. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, like we, a, a, seen, a, I mean, COVID 19 you, is not a natural disaster like a tornado or a hurricane. Or, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, your house is still there and you're, you know, and, and, and like here, no, there's been no civil unrest, so to speak. Yeah. There's always scumbags out running around. But, um, mm -hmm. You know, we we don't have a complete breakdown of. Uh, I think what uh, happened. I think what happened in Katrina, like Walter is saying, um, what happened in Katrina was an apocalyptic situation that we don't often see in America. We've probably seen that maybe a couple of times in America, um, where like like these these people who are police officers, and and I'm not trying to defend them because I think they obviously had no honor and and didn't live up to what they said they would. But, you know, it was like the end of the world. And they were like, hey, every man for themselves. But this is not what they were supposed to do. And then the right. flip side of that, 9-11 in New York, that's not how police officers reacted in New York to 9-11. They didn't go, oh, okay, it's the end of the world. We're out of here. You know, yeah. but it's, it's down to the individual ultimately, yeah. right? Yeah. To yeah. decide what they're going to do when they face that threat. And, yeah. and uh, beyond all of that, the point, the, the, the big point here, I think about all of these things when people keep trying to take guns away from people, whether it's in America where we have a Second Amendment or it's in Canada or anywhere else in the world where you don't have those things, is that ultimately people, are, you're the first line of defense for yourself. How many, how many police officers can you have in Canada or America so that, like, you're going to have to have a police officer for each person? Yeah. You know. It's not um, possible. That's why you know I'm a yeah. Second Amendment supporter. I believe that 
you have a right to defend your family. Because mm-hmm. even if you call in a, a, like a suburb town, it's going to take a couple minutes or a minute for the police to respond. Maybe yeah. in the cities it takes hours. Sometimes they don't even show up because they're just so busy. Mm-hmm. So if you have a life, like a life-threatening situation, you should be able to defend yourself and your family. It's America. Yeah. That's what it's about. And, and you need whatever – whatever you feel it's not up to a politician or anyone else what you can have it's not up yep. to those people what you can have to defend yourself and yep. it, and like this guy uh, uh, trudeau's talking about um you know these things were invented for this or you know these are weapons of war or whatever no one has the right to tell me what i need to defend myself in the moment you don't even have any clue of what i'm going to be facing and people and and in this situation we can already see that the people in nova scotia were facing a a a, a crazy man for 13 hours on their own and if i was in that situation i would want freaking attack helicopters or anything that i could get my hands on much less like an ar15 right yeah, you know, uh, so, and, and, and even an AR-15. I get my nine-year-old daughter and kids when they're young. It's a it's a light recoiling, very accurate, easy to use weapon. That's why they made it. It's mm-hmm. for the soldier, the basic soldier to to operate. You know, it's a fifty to three hundred yard gun without mm-hmm. dropping that much. Maybe twenty inches at three hundred. That's what you're using, and it's just an easy shoot in low recoil gun. Mm-hmm. So you could teach your grandma how to shoot with the AR and shit hit stuff at 300 yards. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's such a good gun. Yeah. And if you have someone that is handicapped or, you know, it's, you know, if it's it's not that heavy, um, they can operate that weapon with ease if they mm-hmm. get a little bit of training with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This idea that they keep saying though, oh, you don't need this. All you need, th- we're not taking guns away from you. You can still have handguns. You don't know what I need. You don't know what yes. I need. It's not your business what I need. It's not your business what I use it for either. If I use it for hunting, if I use it for sport, if I collect this thing, if I'm using it to defend myself, it's not your business. Yeah. You know. And there's laws again. There's if you murder someone or you do a negligent discharge and cause property damage, there's laws on the books to to uh, you would be punished accordingly, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. if you have an AR15, you have 30 rounds in it, it might take one round. You know, as long as you're responsible, you should, you have the right to own weapons. How many times do we see, how many times do we see a video of people, because this thing that people keep having in their mind that you don't need stuff, um, I was looking at a clip from Joe Rogan, he had this uh, guy on today and they were talking about guns, so I just looked at that specific clip and it kind of made me mad because they got into this conversation about you don't need something. And and, and Um, that is so insane of people telling me what I need and what I don't need. Go ahead, Walt. You don't. You don't need more than one room in your house. Yeah, you don't. I guess you, you don't, don't need more. You, you don't need you more don't, than one pair of underwears. You, you <laughs> yeah. don't need. You don't need air conditioning. Yeah, <laughs> and you don't need heat most of the year either. So, I mean, what? What? Once again, mm-hmm. that's like telling people, you know, turn the lights off, don't use the water, blah blah blah. It's like, who cares if if I can pay for it, I need it. Yeah, it's you know not I mean? like, yep. but they don't know what we need, and people are in yeah. different situations, and and situations changing, and the, the the you know if you wind up in a situation where there's three four people kicking your doors down, uh, yep. what, do you want to have an overabundance or an underabundance of firepower? Yeah. Exactly, yeah, machine gun would be nice. Yeah. yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, you know this idea of you don't. You know what's funny, and and this is like a little bit of a sidetrack here. I'm not gonna do this too long, but you know, recently someone like broke into Eminem's house, right? You know, and this is the like Eminem was recently talking this nonsense of oh, people don't need you don't need all these guns. Someone broke into his house, and somehow they're not putting it out in the news how he held this person, but he held this person until the cops came. Yeah. But that's not out there yet, so we don't know. I don't know. I don't want to speculate yeah. on it. But when someone kicks in your door, yes, there is no. I want an overabundance of yes. of protection of firepower. You, yeah. you see it on the internet all the time. You have multiple people doing home invasion. It's not just one person mm-hmm. doing a home invasion. It's mm-hmm. usually multiple people doing it because they know there might be a group of people inside, and they need the numbers to overwhelm and take control. Yeah. So if you have, if you have, uh, you know. AR upstairs with you know four mags, then you're good. You yeah. know you, you you have firepower, but you don't want a six shot revolver by your bed. I mean it'll work, but it's like you know it's not. You need something that's to be the right tool for the job. 
Yeah, absolutely. And then also, um, you know, let's go beyond that. What, what about, you know, one of the reasons why in America we have the Second Amendment is uh, in case our government... Tyranny. Yeah, in case our government decides to do whatever they want to us, like, I don't know, say we can't, we can't defend ourselves. Like telling you got to wear a freaking mask now after this thing is all over with. Yeah. yeah. This, is a, this is a thing that can Louisiana. You got to wear a mask to work. What about the, the last month? Why didn't you wear a mask to work the last month? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like, I know yeah, this. They made an executive order in Connecticut, but it's not enforceable. So, like, unlike, like, Michigan and some other states where they, you know, they're giving summons out for people don't comply, here it's really up to, like, the business. So if you walk into a business and you don't have a mask on, they can ask you to leave if you're not social distancing. And we didn't have we didn't have too many problems up here. Yeah, uh, I don't know why. Again, but yeah, motor boater is saying that guy. He's talking about the Joe Rogan thing. Um, the guy said you don't need fifty round clips. I'm guessing he thinks he wouldn't miss his targets if he was being shot at. You, for, yeah. First of all, um, just like I don't every, know if they make fifty round clips. First of all, but. <laughs> and just like every oh. gun guy, I was I was like, oh my god. Not a clip. Yeah. But, like a magazine, but not a clip. Yeah. That'd you, be a six stripper clip. You'd be like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be pushing it for a long time. You, yeah. uh, people have to stop this idea of what people need and what they don't that's, need. That's freaking again, socialism. Yeah. I asked that guy that's saying that shit what he's driving. Yeah. Or how he got to that Joe Rogan show or, or yeah. what side of the house no, he This guy's in. a motorcycle guy. That's where he's a comedian. You and don't he's, need no he's motorcycle. He's into motorcycles. He's into cars. Yes. Motorcycles motorcycles are, uh, I mean, they're, think about a motorcycle. It's just one person riding along most of the time. You can't carry no luggage. You can't do nothing. Well, not, mm-hmm. not efficiently anyways. Yeah. Why do you need a motorcycle? We can, so, easily, uh, we can easily go to that. We can easily go to that level and tell people what they don't need. But we don't do it because it's not our freaking business what people uh, need. It's not our business uh, how much money you need, how many cars, motorcycles, shoes, right, right, right. you know, I mean, jewelry. I, I, Guns, whatever. Yep. Speaking of money, though, when, when I was at UConn, um, I had a history teacher, and the history teacher was like just mother effing all these like rich people and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And if what? you'll need this, you'll need that. But he forgot the when I saw him driving, he had a brand new Mercedes. So I was <laughs> I had an A at that time. It's always that I went guy. To a C, I went to a C plus because I, I argued with my teacher like, "What do you drive in with?" And right now you have a you know a fifty thousand dollars Mercedes. What do you mean? Why do you need that? And I, I did <laughs> oh, that he didn't like that. that. He didn't Wait, like that. He did tell me, like yeah. he was tell just, him you don't need tenure. Yeah, he yeah. was like uh, one of those liberal socialists that yeah. have the he, money and the good. Yeah, as a teacher, want. he doesn't need a salary. We could just give him. Oh. Uh, we could just give him yeah. room and board. You just know. get some rice. Yeah. You get a you get a cup of rice and you know a place a mat to sleep yeah. on. That's all you Stop need. telling okay. us what we need. And then when you have the pri- like the prime minister of Canada trying to tell us what we need is nonsense. Obviously, he's not telling us as Americans, although he is. He's trying to do that. Well, but, he's starting it. Yeah, he's telling Canadians, people in Canada, do not let people other people tell you what you need. That is not freedom. That's not liberty for people to tell you what you need. Okay. Well, we should tell him is fix his med- uh, medical uh, stuff up there so people stop coming to America to get <laughs> medicine and everything else. Or not medicine, but like surgeries. and, Surgery and You stuff. know, they're on a waiting list up there. Yeah, Canada has a lot of problems. That guy personally has issues. Everyone has those things. But, you know, th- this idea, um, this I think like you guys said earlier, this was his plan all along. They're just using this tragedy that happened as a reason to do something. And, you know, oh, this happened. No, you were planning on doing this the whole time. And this thing happened. Every time things like this happen, I'm telling you guys, if you talk to people, when people see this stuff, they go, you know what I need? I need guns. This is what the guy on Joe Rogan was saying. I know who mm-hmm. that guy is. I know that. I know uh, it's Alonzo uh, Borden, I think is his name. And he is, lots of people know this guy does not like guns. But he's telling Joe Rogan how he went and bought a gun in L.A. After this whole COVID nineteen thing kicked off, oh, yeah. and this is a guy who was before saying people don't need guns, people don't need guns. Yeah. Then he went and bought a, a couple of guns, right? Oh yeah. So when people see this stuff happening, this is their reaction. This is what oh, yeah. happened in America and in in other places when this thing hits. Everyone's like, "Oh crap! I'm going to be out here on my own. I'm going to go do this." Oh, yeah. The best thing I saw, I hang out at a local gun store, uh, Newington Gun Exchange, mm-hmm. and I, 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 it's like my little clubhouse. I hang out there all the time. So we <laughs> saw so many people come in and wanting to buy guns, 
And they're like, what do you mean I need a permit? What do you need to or try to buy ammo? Mm-hmm. Why, is there, there, why is there a background check? Yeah. I and mean, why, we'll, is it, why is oh, there no, a, a waiting to, period? A waiting yeah, you period. take an NRA class. And, yeah. You know, that takes time. And then yeah. there's like a six month wait. Oh, he was then, he was talking about that on Rogan. He didn't. He bought the guns. He don't have them yet. Yeah, he's like, how do? What do you mean I gotta wait? I mean, what do you think of this class? And here's like, the weird not... thing: you, you, when, <laughs> if you think the time when something goes wrong, right? Yeah. When that dude is kicking in your door, that's not the time to go get a gun. Yeah. You that because uh, I mean to go buy one and go through background checks and the waiting period. That's not you. You definitely don't have that kind of time. Someone's already kicking in your door. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.